All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about neuromuscular junction blockers. Uh, now, here there's an outline. Uh, this is the nerve, and this is the muscle. In the previous video, we have discussed about the neuromuscular junction events. Uh, in this video, we'll be discussing that what are the agents which are acting on this neuromuscular junction, right? Okay. So let us start with the first agent. The first. The first toxin which acts on this neuromuscular junction is botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin. Now, where does this botulinum toxin acts? This acts on the snare proteins. You know, uh, for exocytosis of acetylcholine, there are snare proteins which are present. So, whenever there are acetylcholine and this has to be exocytosed, these snare proteins open. Okay, and then there is exocytosis of acetylcholine. So this botulinum toxin blocks this snare proteins, right? So there is no exocytosis of acetylcholine. All right. Okay, this was botulinum toxin uh, mechanism of action. So this blocks blocks snare protein. All right, snare protein. And once this snare protein will be blocked. This will cause uh, no acetylcholine release, no acetylcholine release, and this will lead to flaccid paralysis, right? So this will lead to flaccid paralysis, uh, flaccid, flaccid paralysis. All right. So uh, this is also used dermatologically nowadays to treat the wrinkles. So in this wrinkles, uh, uh, suppose there is an old age woman or man and he needs to uh, get treated for, for his wrinkles. So they give botulinum toxin to the wrinkles and this causes fl uh, flaccid paralysis. So this causes the disappearance of your wrinkles, right? So this was our first toxin. First, uh, uh, the agent which acts on the neuromuscular junction. Now second thing is, second will be our myasthenia gravis okay i am writing the short form mg myasthenia gravis now in myasthenia gravis what happens that this myasthenia gravis releases autoantibodies right these autoantibodies goes and acts on the acetylcholine receptors and it causes destruction of acetylcholine receptors all right so this releases autoantibodies all right and this will cause the destruction of acetylcholine receptors. So once the acetylcholine which is released from the presynaptic terminal won't be able to act on the acetylcholine receptors here. So there won't be any action potential which is generated on the muscle, right? Okay. So this myasthenia gravis secretes autoantibodies, autoantibodies, okay? This causes destruction of the acetylcholine receptors all right okay the third pathophysiology which uh, we will be discussing will be curare okay i uh, will be writing here the third one is curare curare or curare or curare we don't know what we pronounce but this is a toxin this is a, a poison neuromuscular junction poison which is used what this does this goes and this competes with the acetylcholine all right so curare competes with acetylcholine uh, and uh, what it does that it causes decrease in end plate potential so this goes and competes with acetylcholine so what will this cause this cause this causes competes this competes with acetylcholine and this causes decrease in end plate potential right Okay, once there is decrease in inflate potential, what will this cause? This will cause uh, like a respiratory paralysis and death. This will cause respiratory paralysis and death. So this is a very severe poisoning condition which is used. So this competes with the acetylcholine receptors. Okay, this competes with the acetylcholine and this acts on the receptors and this decreases the end plate potential which causes uh, respiratory paralysis and death. So this was our third neuromuscular junction agent which blocks. The fourth one is the 
uh, there is a, a, a drug which is called as hemicolinum okay i'll be writing here hemicolinum all right so what hemicolinum does this blocks the sodium and choline okay co transporters so once this is blocked sodium and choline co transporters are blocked so here the acetylcholine which is generated in the presynaptic terminal won't be generated so there is what there is decreased depletion of acetylcholine stores okay there is depletion of acetylcholine stores and once there will be decrease uh, depletion of acetylcholine uh, stores in the presynaptic membrane this will cause uh, delay in the neuromuscular junctions okay neuromuscular junction events okay so this was our fourth pathophysiology one two three fourth now one more which is remaining is the neostigmin now neostigmin what it does that neostigmin goes and acts on the it one is your neostigmin all right neostigmin now neostigmin goes and acts on the acetylcholine here there won't be conversion of uh, acetylcholine to acetate right so neostigmin goes and acts on the acetylcholine esterase enzyme which uh, leads to uh, decrease in the conversion of acetylcholine to acetate so there will be increase in acetylcholine all right so once there will be increase in acetylcholine what will this cause this will cause prolongation of action prolong prolongation okay prolongation and uh, like uh, uh, this action will be pro uh, prolongation of acetylcholine in end plate potential right okay so this was our fifth pathophysiology so we have discussed botulinum toxin myasthenia gravis curare then is uh, neostigmin hemicolinum the last which is remaining is a disease which is called as lombard eaton myasthenic syndrome okay lombard eaton myasthenic syndrome okay what this does this lombard eaton myasthenic syndrome this this blocks the voltage gated calcium channels so once this voltage gated calcium channels are blocked there won't be any influx of calcium so once there won't be any influx of calcium this will this won't cause release of acetylcholine when the acetylcholine won't be released this will uh, this won't be able uh, to act on the acetylcholine receptors and there won't be any action potential which is generated so lombard eaton myasthenic uh, syndrome acts on the voltage gated calcium channels this blocks the voltage gated calcium channels so these individuals are having a very hard time for muscle contraction you know and this improves as soon as like uh, uh, having an incremental response once the patient starts exercising so these channel uh, calcium channels starts improving so there is incremental response to exercise all right whereas in myasthenia gravis there is decremental response to exercise all right guys so we have discussed today neuromuscular junction blockers now in this we are, in the next video we'll be discussing about uh, skeletal muscle contraction thank you guys